Good evening. Today is Wednesday, September the 16th of 2020, and this will be our third class um, for the originals. Our first class, we studied the Romans Road. It was kind of long. Um, we're going to try to cut down the messages so people can pay attention. There was a lot of information, a lot of verses, and we do know that when there's a lot of verses, it's hard for people to pay attention, especially with all the distractions that we have in our homes and wherever you're listening to. So, we're going to try to focus on one verse this evening. And uh, the title of this lesson or preaching, whatever you want to call it, is It Is Finished. So, um, we went through the Romans Road the first time that we did our study here. And the second one was The Thief on the Cross. How did that thief make it to paradise, heaven? Uh, and we went over it. We looked at the verses. There's five verses he believed. He confessed and he had, he had faith. And uh, it just goes to show that that's what we need in order to get, to be saved. To have that relationship with Jesus Christ, with God Almighty. And it's not of works. And in this verse, it's going to, uh, that we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. But with this particular verse right here, Jesus Christ said, it is finished. And when he said it is finished, that means he did the work on the cross. We don't have to add anything to it or teach falsely. Uh, there's people out there that want to say that we have to do this and we have to do that in order to get to heaven. That's a lie. Because if, if we had to do other works to get to heaven, then that thief would have never made it. You read that story in Luke chapter 23. He made it to heaven. He railed on Jesus. Both thieves railed on Jesus. And the second thief, the one that believed, had a change of heart. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He had that faith. The thief said, remember me, Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom. And he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And that's what, he, that's what God said. That's what the word of God says. Now, if you don't believe in the word of God, well, then there, there's nothing we, we could do about it. But we pray and we ask that you understand. We call upon the Holy Spirit that God works in your heart so you can understand the scripture. And, you know, that's why God called me to preach so I can help with people that can understand and to break it down and simplify it in, in a better way that, that we can understand. It's very simple. This, this right here, a kid should be able, be able to understand this. I'm not here for likes. I'm not here for money. I'm not here to, uh, to edify myself. I'm not here for none of that. I, I'm here because God called me to preach and that's what I'm going to do. I want to preach the word of God in the way the way it was it was written. Okay, so now the preaching of the cross, the crucifixion. Now there's 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 four epistles that it that where it's written. We have in Matthew chapter 27. And if you guys have your Bibles, read on. We have Matthew tw chapter 27, Mark 15, Luke 23. Luke 23 is where it talks about the thief. The conversation that they had on the cross next to Jesus, that was Luke's. They were all there, but they had different, they were in different positions and they have different stories, but it's the same. It's Jesus Christ was crucified. And it's it's beautiful to really study and understand these words, what, what they wrote down, and, and they have and it's for us. It's for us so we can know that we could go to God, we could go to heaven through Jesus Christ, through the blood. So here we go, Luke 23, that's the thieves. And John 19, we're going to study, it is finished. It is finished. It's real simple. There's, there's no works involved. It's a fact. There's no works involved. You, can't, you cannot get to heaven through other men. The man next to you, the man that you see here, and the man over there, we're all sinners. We're all of the flesh. We sin every single day. The Bible talks about mortifying and crucifying your flesh. While Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. Now we are to, as Christians, crucify our flesh. That means kill it. That means, and that's daily. We have to get up in the morning and we have to say, you know what? God first, not me. We have to call upon the Lord. We can't, we can't play religion. We can't play tradition. We got to call upon the Lord. Remember. It's the one-on-one -on -one relationship with, with Jesus Christ, with God Almighty. And this flesh fights against the Spirit. It's mentioned in Galatians 5, 16. Uh, we're not going to go there, but 
We're going to stay focused on this. So in this, in John's, uh, what he wrote down of the crucifixion, right before this verse, uh, Jesus had said, I thirst. He said, I thirst. Well, he was, he was on that cross. He was paying for yours and my sins. Every bad thought that you have, every corrupt thought, every bad thing that you've done, every bad thing that you're thinking of doing, uh, all the hate, the, 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 what's in our mind, the hate that is filled with, with our neighbor, with our parents, with our kids, with our uncle, with our aunt, with our grandparents, all that hate. He felt that on the cross. Those people that are depressed and confused and don't know where to go, Jesus Christ felt that on the cross. He felt everything on the cross. He paid for your sins, yours and my sins. And that's a beautiful gift that God gave us. He gave us His only begotten Son. And in this particular verse, He said right here, we're going to cut it short. He says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, they gave Him vinegar, it was like a, a numbing agent is what they what they did uh, in, in those times, and they still do it. People still take it. But remember, Jesus never took that wine or that gall mixed with vinegar. This part, it says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, look at what he said. In my Bible, it's written, the red letters is what Jesus said. It says, he said, it is finished. What Jesus Christ did on that cross, He paid for our sins. There is nothing more to be taken and nothing to be added but the simple fact that Jesus Christ died on that cross for our sins. We are in what you call a time of grace right now. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. All you have to do receive is receive it. But Satan has us so filled with the things of this earth that we don't have time for Jesus Christ. We don't have time to get our Bibles out and really study the scripture correctly. We'll read a verse and we'll be like, oh, well, I'm good. No, you're not good. We have to study to show thyself approved. And this is what my duty as a Christian is, is to break it down correctly. Now, in life, and I don't like to use examples of, um, of people, but you have these cement finishers. When they go and pour you a nice slab, they go and pour you a nice slab at home. And you get that cement finisher. He's called the finisher. Well, he goes out there and he hits it with his hand and he gets that cement all nice and pretty and shiny and ready for you. And you're like, whoa, that looks beautiful. New construction when you build a house. Well, I was like, wow. Well, that cement finisher is called the finisher. And when he's done, He's done. He's done. You're not going to go back on there and try to add your, your, your two cents to make it better, right? If you do, you're going to make it worse. You're going to mess it up. You're going to mess up what the finisher did. And that's a good example of what Jesus Christ did. Why would you want to argue the fact and why would you want to listen to another man's, man's teachings, not using the Word of God? I'm talking about those people that cannot use the Word of God, that cannot use the Scripture. They want to go and write themselves their own little book or teach this and teach that. They want to teach falsely, and that's from Satan. When Jesus Christ said, it is finished, it is finished. If you are if you are watching tonight and you want to ask Jesus Christ into your heart, if you're going through that pain, if you're going through that suffering, if you're going through that doubt, hey, you know what, I don't know where I'm going to go when I die, this fleshly body. My flesh is going to stay here, but my soul, the soul has to go somewhere. The soul, and it's so important, like we always preach, life is nothing but a vapor in this world. That's all it is. It's going to, you're going to see it and then it's gone compared to eternity. Now, a lot of my friends at the, at the shop and a lot of wherever these messages are going to, going to listen to them. It's important. If you have not truly repented, if you don't have that faith, if you don't believe, if you have not confessed to Jesus Christ, today you could. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. If it says it's the power of God, then I want to preach and teach this every single day. I want to be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and when you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. 
And whenever you are saved, you're going to want to go and tell other people about Jesus Christ. You're going to want to tell the, the next door neighbor. And you're going to want to tell any, anybody that's around you. You're going to be like, hey, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God? Do you? You're going to want to ask. Because that's our duty as a Christian. And if Jesus Christ said that, that thief on that cross... He says, oh, today you will be with me in paradise. I'm going to believe what the Bible says. I don't want to believe what a man says. Why would you want to believe what a man says? He's the same as you. He's a sinner. He's the same as me. And I can't judge that man. I cannot judge that man. I have no right to judge no man. But using the, using the scripture and preaching the inspired word of God, we have the authority to tell people about Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. The shedding of his blood. We're saved by grace. We're in a time of grace. Receive Jesus Christ into your heart. It's that simple. Have childlike faith. When they say childlike faith, it's like whenever you tell a kid, I'm going to go to the store and bring you, bring you Baskin Robbins. That little kid's going to be there. and He's going to believe you. And that's what we got to do. We got to believe God. When he says, when he sent his only begotten son, we got to believe it. That's all there is. That's all it is. It's that simple. It's that simple. All you got to do is have that faith, that belief, and you just got to repent. We got to turn from our sin. We can't just say it with our mouth and be like, oh, you know what? I, re I, I want to ask Jesus Christ into my heart, but I want to hold on to my sin. No, if you truly repented of your sin, you're going to want to let that sin go. You're not going to be perfect, and I'm not going to be perfect. But this story, I want everybody to, to understand, and I encourage you, to study your Bible. Don't listen to uh, what a man says. Books are good, especially if it's a man of God. Books are good. And other teachings, as long as it's used through the Word of God. The Bible talks about try the spirits, but if they don't say Jesus Christ, they're not good. It has to have Jesus Christ in it. He was the perfect sacrifice. And let's not get all caught up in different uh, beliefs and arguments about this and about that. Us Christians should stick together and be able to talk and preach about what Jesus Christ did on that cross. That's what we need to do. We need to pull together. We don't even. We shouldn't even have time to talk about uh, uh, politics, about certain people, or even just the person down the street. We should only be able to, as Christians, pray for those people. We have to pray for the leaders. We have to. It's our duty. It's our job as Christians to pray for them. They have a big duty. They run our country. They run our world. It doesn't do no good just to be talking about people. The Bible talks about being a backbiter. There's no room for that. If we all pulled together, we repented of our sins, we would have a better state and a better country and a better world. It's There's still time. We're still here. We're still alive. We can't just give up and be like, oh, that's it. Forget about it. I don't want to do this. No, it's our duty. We could still turn the world around. We could still have a revival. But it has to start within us. We can't make this person do anything. I can't make this person, my neighbor, or, or anybody else do anything. The only thing I can do is preach and teach and pray for that person and make sure that I crucify and mortify my flesh. That's what I got to do. I got to pay attention to my own self, look upon my own self, and Ask myself, am I doing the right thing for God? Don't worry about anybody else. Let's study. Study to show yourself approved. Let's pray. Let's do God's will. I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have given us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that uh, we don't do things for fame and we don't do things for money when we're in the ministry, Lord. But we do things for the edifying of the church, Lord, and and for the honor and glory of God Almighty who sent His only begotten Son to die on that cross, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that He shed His blood for my sins, the terrible, rotten person that I am, Lord, and for everybody else. He just did not die for me, Lord, but He died for all the world, the whole wide world. Every person that has a soul that is living, that is breathing, Lord, He died for that person. And I just pray, Lord, that we pull ourselves together as Christians and we... And we start praying for each other like we should and love each other. Now, we don't talk about each other. There's no time for that. You'll be coming soon, Lord, and there might be a day where we're driving down the street. We might die, Lord, or we have a heart attack, or we could die however, Lord. Times, 
times are wasting, Lord. We have to get off uh, tradition, we have to get off religion, and we have to get on the right track with that relationship with Jesus Christ, with God Almighty, Lord. Give us the strength that we do your will, Lord. Let your will be done in our lives, Lord. And that we all know that we're all in the same boat, Lord. And that all lives matter. All lives matter, Lord. No matter what, Jesus Christ died for everybody. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.